right. Hey guys, how's it going? All got a bit of info, you're keen to go? Now you're all here planning some kind of big trip. Yes? Yeah. Excellent, good, we're all in the right room, good stuff. Now, a big trip is a little bit different than just kind of a normal holiday, and I just want to talk about it just for a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about a heap of Australian New Zealand stuff uh, tonight. I'm a little bit biased when it comes to my, my little part of the world. But first, you're all planning sort of a big trip, not just a couple of weeks lying on the beach, not just, you know, going down to Magaluf and partying your ass off for a little while. You're going away on this big trip. It's different than just a little holiday. Everybody takes something completely different. Even if you guys are traveling together, I assume? Yep, you'll both come back with completely different things. You'll get different experiences from different days. You'll different memories. In 10 years' time, you'll remember completely different things about it. It's the beauty of sort of uh, these kind of long overland kind of travels. But the one thing that binds them all together, everybody's trip, everybody in this room, is putting yourself somewhere like that. I don't know whether you can make it out, that's one of our little boats, and I'm going to show you how to get exactly there a little bit later on, and leaving all of the normal boring stuff at home. I'm not saying you've all got boring lives, by the way. <laughs> Could have been a bit more tactful than that. But leaving the, you know, leaving the thoughts about the, the economy and terrible news and all that kind of stuff, going away, just thinking about the exciting stuff. Maybe doing something completely different that either you can't do here, or that you hadn't tried before. That is a spectacular photo, isn't it? That's absolutely amazing. That's just off the west coast of Australia, a little place called Margaret River, which is, funnily enough, it's more well known for its great white sharks than its dolphins. <laughs> so you can imagine how much that guy was hitting himself when that thing jumped out of the way back then. <laughs> Go and do something completely stupid like this idiot, namely myself, did about three weeks ago. Four weeks ago now in New Zealand. Um, that's the second highest bungee in the world called the Never Spongy. And it's absolutely terrifying. But you absolutely, don't check your head, you absolutely have to do it. <laughs> Even the ride out, you ride out in this little thing, which is essentially a shopping trolley, attached to this bit of string, and then they attach you to another bit of string and shove you out. It's amazing. You absolutely have to do it. Just south of Queenstown, we do it from Queenstown to stay to it, called the Never Spongy. 134 meters of absolute pants filling terror. It's awesome. Some people go for, for the wildlife. Australia and New Zealand have some of the most spectacular and unique wildlife and scenery anywhere in the world. Australia especially is a massive country. It's huge. 8 million square kilometres. Uh, so say if Perth was in Dublin, Brisbane on the east coast would be somewhere near Moscow. So it takes up basically all of Europe. It is huge. So spectacular scenery from massive mountains to rainforests to beautiful beaches to anything you want really, to the absolutely amazing outback. So some people go for that kind of stuff. Who's doing a working holiday in either Oz or New Zealand? Anyone? Yes? Yes, yes, yes? Four. You guys are going to be busy. We've got a lot of fruit to pick. So I'm going to talk a little bit about working holidays in Australia and New Zealand a little bit later on. I'm going to talk about three things. Um, I'm going to talk about some transport options. I'm going to talk about the beautiful Whitsundays region, which is right in behind here. And I'm going to talk about some accommodation and work options while you're in Australia and New Zealand as well. First of all, transport. Who's heard of Greyhound? Everybody's hand goes up. Everybody's heard of Greyhound. Greyhound is a bus company. There we go. You know as much as me. I'm going to show you this little video here, which hopefully it works. See Australia. See Australia. Like it's meant to be seen. Now we've just bought a whole new fleet of buses. That's what, what this kind of little video is about. Beautiful, lovely, reclining leather seats. You need to wear a suit when you get on. They're very, very <laughs> neat. <laughs> They've all got Wi-Fi on board and little charging points for your gadgets and gadgets. You get a free kangaroo with every, every booking sold. Uh, really nice buses, but they're a bus at the end of the day, so I don't want to talk about them too much. What I do want to talk about are a couple of different passes you can get with, with Greyhound. Now, the guys at, at STA know them back to front, so they'll be able to tell you all about them. Just the basic passes, either a kilometre-based pass or kind of a route-based pass. So the kilometre-based pass works exactly the way you would think it would work. You buy a bunch of kilometres, you can use them absolutely anywhere in Australia for up to 12 months. Fantastic for working holiday makers because you end up in some fairly obscure places if you're going out working on farms, outback pubs, that kind of stuff. And in Australia, getting around sort of land-based stuff without flying, we don't have a huge rail network. So unless you're driving yourself or going by bus, it's very, very difficult to get to some of the more kind of out of the way places. Now the route based passes that we do with Greyhound are, again, fairly self-explanatory. You buy a particular route, maybe you want to start in Cairns, finish in Sydney, Melbourne, the other way around, whatever it might be. And you have three months of travel, hop on, hop off, as much as you like in between that. 
So not great for working holiday makers because you probably want it a little bit longer, but fantastic if you're going out just for a trip. You're going to spend it for a few weeks up to a few months, and you just want the flexibility to do it completely under your own, your own kind of itinerary, your own time frame. Um, and you can use any of the network, get on and off the buses as much as you like. There is no restriction to any of the buses you can use, but really flexible options. Really cheap way to do it, say east coast of Australia, hop on, hop off, less than 250 quid. Really cheap. But bear in mind it is just a bus. So I'm going to talk about one of their other products called the Oz Experience. Now the idea of the Oz Experience is to give you all of the flexibility that you get from one of those passes on the Greyhound but give you all of the kind of must-dos along the way as well. Same as you kind of get from guided touring, but you're doing it completely under your own steam, completely on your own itinerary, get on and off as much as you like. Exactly the same as those other passes. So, how does it work? This is the route that we use. So, all the way right up here in the north in Darwin, obviously Kakadu National Park, Litchfield you've probably heard of, uh, Catherine Gorge or Nipmaluk Gorge as it's known these days, uh, that's kind of the, the wet tropics, the top end there, so you can start up right up north, go right down through the Red Centre. Obviously the famous spots, Alice Springs, Uluru, Katajitta, fantastic out back there. Down through Cooper Pedy, anybody heard of Cooper Pedy? Yeah? Amazing town. Everybody lives underground. It's like the opal mining capital of the world and it gets to be like 50 degrees during the summer, so everybody lives down underground, basically in the old opal mines. Really, really amazing place. Crazy bunch of fools that live there, but really, really amazing place. Crazy little outback town. So down through Cooper Pedy, down to Adelaide, where maybe everybody should live underground, down through uh, <laughs> Grampians National Park, Great Ocean Road, and then all the way up that east coast with all the main spots that everybody would have heard of along there. So what you do is you pick the part of that route that you want to do. You might just want to do sort of down as far as Melbourne or Sydney, or you want to do the east coast, or whatever it might be. There's 18 different options. Again, you can use absolutely any Greyhound bus, as flexible as you like, and then you choose the inclusions that you want along the way. So a bare minimum you're gonna get is obviously bus travel. We're a bus company, we give you bus travel. We're also gonna give you surf lesson in Byron Bay. We've mentioned how essential that is. For those of you doing working holiday visas, who was nodding before? Have you had your visa approved yet? Watch out when you do. There's new clauses coming out all the time, but the new one, there's like clause 16 point something or other. After having arrived in Australia and having your visa stamped, you have 90 days to make a reasonable effort to learn to surf. <laughs> Otherwise, your visa is revoked and be sent home. <laughs> so watch out for that one when it's approved. So we give you, just to keep the visa guys happy, we give you a surf lesson in Byron Bay. Stop over in Magnetic Island, I'm going to talk a bit more about it later on. And an awesome day tour around this little place called the Atherton Tablelands, just kind of northwest of Cairns. Beautiful rainforest, absolutely gorgeous waterfalls, and you spend the day with a mad little guy called Captain Matty, who does Captain Matty's barefoot tours, and he takes you up into the rainforest for the day, barbecue lunch, a couple of beers at the end of the day. Really, really relaxing, cracking place to go. So that's the basics you'll get. Your transport plus all of these. Now, if you're going to do maybe just the East Coast, there's kind of three big trips that, end, that everybody ends up doing. And I mentioned these passes have the kind of must-dos along the way. So those three big ones will be the Whitsunday Islands, which most of you have probably heard of, and I'll talk about in a bit more detail in a second. Fraser Island, which we heard a little bit about before. It's an absolutely stunning place. Clearest freshwater streams you will ever see. Absolutely beautiful. It's got something like 80-something lakes on the island as well. It's the world's biggest sand island. So absolutely stunning place. And diving on the barrier reef. So they're kind of three big ones that everybody does on that east coast. Now, if you're going to do the rest of the country, maybe Kakadu National Park. That's uh, Jim Jim Falls in Kakadu National Park. Uh, the Red Centre down the Great Ocean Road, any of those kind of trips. There will be an Oz Experience Pass that will include one or all of those experiences along the way. So any of those must-do trips that you're going to be booking when you get out there anyway, that you will end up doing, you're booking them in advance, they're completely open dated, you're getting great discounts on them, and you just use them as and when you like. If you meet a great bunch of people on the bus, fantastic, go off and do the trip with them. If you meet not a great bunch of people on the bus, <laughs> I'm very aware that I'm being filmed tonight. Not a great bunch of people on the bus. Go and do a trip by yourself. Wait till the next day. You're not kind of tied into any particular group, so you can do it as and when you like. And the best thing is you're traveling completely your own way. All you need to decide before you go is the part of the country that you want to see. Ultimate flexibility for you. Now, I mentioned the Whit Sundays before. Who is definitely going to the Whit Sundays? It is stunning. You're not, it's absolutely beautiful. It's kind of a toss-up between the Whit Sundays and the Red Centre for me. Completely different places, but absolutely beautiful in their own way. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Whit Sundays are about three quarters of the way up the east coast of Australia. So you have Melbourne right down the bottom, Sydney here, 
Brisbane and then Cairns right up the top. Whitsunday is a little place called Airlie Beach about three quarters of the way up, right in the middle of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. So there's a little town called Airlie there, which is the, the town that everybody uses to get out to the islands. 74 islands in the group, 66 of which are completely uninhabited. No building, no nothing on them. Fantastic day walks on there, stunning beaches, amazing reef. Now most people will head out to the Whitsundays probably having seen photos like this. This is a little place called Whitehaven Beach. Actually, that photo I showed you right at the start was taken right there, on that point right there, so you can definitely get there with us. All of our trips will end up going here. This is kind of the, the jewel in the crown of the Whitsundays. Stunning white beach, beautiful islands, turquoise waters, and most people will end up in the region, in the sort of early beach region, because they've seen photos like this and want to get out. I mean, I want to go there now. Forgetting that it's right in the middle of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. You probably consider, if you've done a bit of research, you want to go out to the reef, going right up north up to Cairns and heading out from there. That's where 90% of the trips will go from. You don't have to. The, the reef is 2,600 and something kilometres long. It takes up about half the east coast of Australia, from right up the top of Cape York all the way to about three hours north of Brisbane. So it's huge and you can get to it from hundreds and hundreds of places. Airlie Beach is absolutely fantastic way to do it. It's a little bit different there because it's a little bit further south and the islands are around, so we tend to get some slightly different marine life. We get a lot of these big boys called humphead Maori rats that get up to almost two metres in length and 300 kilos. They're enormous. They'll frighten the hell out of you, but they're lovely and friendly. A little bit nibbly from time to time, but generally friendly. A-list Hollywood celebrities turn up from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> we even get the blue one as well. That's the name I forget. Uh, these guys, if you're really lucky, you'll see how they call them a manatee or a dugong in Australia, or a sea cow. They're really shy, but really gentle, absolutely beautiful. Because we're lucky enough to have those islands, and then the mainland, we have a really kind of shallow channel in between, shallow sandy bottom channel, so we get a lot of seagrasses growing in there. Get a lot of these guys. Uh, we get whales during the season as well. Everybody is obviously going to swim with sharks when you're in Australia, whether you know it or not. <laughs> you definitely will. Best place to do it here, because they're little white tip reef sharks. They're only about that big. They don't take that much of a chunk at all. Uh, dolphins follow most of our trips out as well. Heaps and heaps of sea turtles. It's a hatchery for sea turtles, so you get lots of those. Indistinguishable yellow things that may or may not be alive. I don't know quite what that is. Uh, fish, all kinds of stuff. So absolutely stunning place to get out and see the reef. Fish. Definitely, I'm an expert, as you can see. <laughs> Now, we do it a little bit differently to a lot of the companies that were going out and doing trips in the Barrier Reef. If you grab the Australia brochure that's on the back wall there, the orange one, you'll see there's a lot of different options to go out and see the reef. There's a lot of different day trips. There's a lot of different packages that will give you a day trip out to the islands, out to the reef, and then you'll stay on one of the inhabited islands in a hotel, uh, a little bit like Laura was talking about. We do it a little bit differently in that all of our trips are actually accommodated on our boat. So we actually stay out on the vessels overnight, which is a wholly different experience than just going out for a day trip or going out for a bit of a day trip and then staying on one of the, the islands. The advantage being that all of the trips will leave around about the same time in the morning. So about eight in the morning, there'll be a mass exodus out of Shute Harbour, which is where all the, uh, out of Ellie Beach, where all the boats leave from, and everybody will be heading out to the reef. All of the day trippers, all of the guys heading out to the hotels, they'll all be heading out at once. So what we do is we'll head up a little bit further north, we'll do a bit of sailing for a little, the morning, we'll stop for a bit of lunch around the northern islands. Once the day trippers turn around at about three in the afternoon and start heading back, that's when we'll go down. We've got the beaches to ourselves, the reefs to ourselves, the hiking tracks to ourselves. In what is one of the most popular tourist spots in Australia, it's absolutely phenomenal to pretty much get it to yourself. Because it's a, uh, a national marine park and also a world heritage area, they really restrict the overnight mooring licenses around the islands and most all of our boats have got them and we have most of the ones that are available in there. So pretty much if you're out there, you're out there on one of our boats, which is absolutely beautiful. Once everybody's gone, we moor up in one of the little, little bays, a nice little calm bay, sit around, have a couple of beers. The next morning, the sun comes up over the islands, jump in and have a swim. It's an amazing way to start your day. Now, a lot of our trips are run with these uh, ex-racing yachts. So you can see Siska here, a little ragamuffin there. I don't know whether I see you can see the, the kind of picture there, but that's the kind of sailing we do. That's proper ocean going. These are built for ocean racing. Actually, Cisco was, at one stage, just after she was built, I think early 90s, 91, 92, was the fastest yacht in her class in the world. She set a world record here in the UK, actually. It was the fastest yacht in the world. So 
you don't really get a chance to play around with boats of that caliber much, so they're awesome fun just to be on and have a bit of a play around with. All of our food, soft drinks, park fees, snorkeling gear is all included. So, you know, I mentioned the reef before. We'll stop two or three times a day to jump off to a bit of snorkeling. Uh, we tend to go to some of the, the sort of outer reef parts as well that are kind of less popular with, you know, obviously less people there. We've got a group of about 10 to 15, maximum 20. Um, the advantage of that being that if you go out of Cairns, you go out on one of the, the big dive boats out of Cairns, you've got up to 300 people on those boats. So you're all out at the same reef together, 300 people. It's far, far better to go out with a smaller group. You know, you're not disturbing the wildlife as much. You get to see a hell of a lot more as well. Plus you get to spend a bit more time in the water with us because we're out there overnight too. So all of your stuff is included. If you want to get involved and learn to sail, you can do that with yourself. If you just want to lounge around and top up your tan, you can do that with you as well. Now, for those of you doing a working holiday visa, we do what we call a 23-day sail learn to earn course, which is essentially taking you from absolute novice, know nothing about boats at all, to essentially crew grade with us. So it's 23 days of complete training. It's run alongside the Maritime College in Australia, so it's an international qualification. We get a lot of people who come and do it with us, maybe go for another company in Ailey as well, they work for us for a while, go to someone else. Maybe Fiji you mentioned before, New Zealand, a lot of travel around the Pacific end up in the Caribbean, whatever it might be. So it's a pretty cool way to, to earn your cash. Hell of a lot better than picking up fruit, which is the only other option. It's this or fruit. There's the two things you can do in Australia. And this is way cooler. So yeah, we do 23 days. It works out at about 100 Australian dollars a day. So 50 quid, it's pretty damn cheap. All your accommodation, training, food, everything's included. Really, really good value. Now for those who might not be into their racing yachts, obviously quite a fast paced way to get around. The main bulk of our fleet are those X racing yachts, but we do have some fantastic luxury catamarans, all with private accommodation, great food, great wines, that kind of stuff. Uh, Whit Sunday Adventurer, which is a bit more of adventurous travel, funnily enough. It's got a hot tub on the foredeck, which is pretty damn cool way to start. And the beautiful Solway Lass, she's probably my favorite, 112 years old this year, absolutely stunning vessel. There is not many of these boats left in the world. She's a proper old sailboat. So it's all sort of big oak decks and brass and rigging and huge canvas sails, an amazing way to see the, uh, to see the reef and see the island. You can probably see a couple of people sitting in the, in the bow nets there, uh, lounging the day away. That's the way to travel. That is the way to go. We get pods of dolphins that'll follow them along as well. So spring out underneath you, it's a pretty damn amazing spot. Now, once you've done all that, so you've been all over Australia, you've got experience, you've gone and done your wit Sundays, you need somewhere to stay. Now there's the two basics, whenever you travel anywhere, Accommodation and transport, and the more of that you can sort out before you leave, whether it be completely open dated stuff or just booking a few nights here and there, the easier it's going to be when you get there, and the cheaper you're going to get it as well, because you're basically buying it in bulk before you leave. Most of it, as the guys mentioned, can be done completely open dated, which is a really, really good way to, to travel now. So you're pre-paying for things, getting them at a cheaper price, and then using them as and when, once you get there. So I'm going to talk about a co accommodation pass that we have here, but base, uh, Basically a collection of hostels all throughout Australia and all throughout New Zealand. The idea being, it's not too cheesy, to be a bit of a base for you when you get to Australia. Uh, so to give you somewhere to, not just somewhere to stay, but somewhere where there's a lot going on. We try to be a bit more than just somewhere to lay your head. So we've always got things like free events, free you know, city walks and tours, barbecue evenings, sports days, all of that kind of stuff. All of our hostels have awesome backpacker bars attached. Not just backpackers, anyone can come, come along. <laughs> awesome bars attached, which I guarantee, even if you're not staying with us, if you're staying anywhere near a base, you'll end up in one of our bars, definitely. They sort of, we've got an amazing one at the early beach, which everybody ends up in. Um, so we do heaps of different events, lots of great accommodation, which I'll show you some photos in a second, plus work and travel packages, which we've designed especially for STA travel with, basically with you guys in mind. Um, there's some photos of beds. Or you're right there. And a photo of a toilet on the right hand side, which is always very nice. That's just a bit of an example of the kind of accommodation we'll have. So we do mostly dorm style. So obviously it's a hostels. So we do anything from four up to 12 bed dorms. Most of them are six to eight bed. We don't do anything over 12 and we've only got two or three of those rooms in the bigger hostels in Sydney and Melbourne. So most of them are six to eight bed dorms. And again, most of those will have their own private bathrooms as well. So it's not a case of 150 beds on one floor and then two bathrooms and you fight over a toilet in the morning, which nobody wants to fight over a toilet in the morning. So it's, it's six or eight people will be sharing that in the same room. We do private rooms, singles, doubles, 
as well if you uh, want to spend a little more and get a little bit more privacy. Now we booked them in two different ways. I mentioned kind of open dated stuff before, but as a bit of an aside, if you're going away, especially if you're going as far as Australia or New Zealand, book a couple of nights wherever it might be, even if it's not with us, book a couple of nights when you first arrive. Because you travel for, well, anything flying for 24 hours, so you're traveling for 30, 35 hours to get there, sort of door to door, you'll be absolutely <laughs> ruined by the time you get there. I guarantee it. You won't know your own name, you won't know where you are. So book somewhere to stay. So you can either just book a couple of nights with us or whoever it might be. So we've got all of these ones all over Australia, all over New Zealand. Or we do what we call our base jumping pass. So this is the open dated, completely flexible pass that I mentioned before. Essentially what you're getting is 10 nights accommodation. You're saving 15 to 20%, around about seven Aussie dollars a night. Average dorm room now is probably around about $30, uh, 28 to $30, and you're getting it for about 23. So you save yourself a bunch of cash. Any money you can save on accommodation in Australia is good money saved at the moment. Book in your first couple of nights, and then you have the rest of the nights to use absolutely anywhere. So if you're going on, maybe on a Oz Experience or Greyhound Pass, or you're doing you know, some kind of tour and you need some accommodation along the way, fantastic thing to have in your back pocket just to use as and when, whenever you arrive in places. So really, really good options. Now, those of you doing working holiday visas, we've put these together just for STA, as I mentioned. We call them Job Search Australia and New Zealand. Now the idea being to give you the very basics you need when you first arrive into Australia or New Zealand. So essentially what we'll give, pick up from the airport, accommodation, breakfast, most important meal of the day, and, uh, and free Wi-Fi for while you're there. So you've got your basic few days sorted out, you can figure out where you are, you know what's going on. But then you're out there for a working holiday, so you need to get all of the basic work stuff. Same as I did when I first came to the UK, all of your work things sorted out, things like bank accounts, tax, superannuation, which is sort of workplace pension, which is law in Australia, everybody gets it now. So we set you up with all of those accounts. We do things like SimCare. SimCare? SIM card. <laughs> Got ahead of myself. Medicare. Medicare is sort of the national health in Australia. So anybody on a UK passport qualifies for Medicare care in Australia as well. So all of those basic harvest guides, CV service, uh, mailing address, whatever, all of those basics that you might need when you first arrive. Now, you could easily spend five days a week, 10 days, whatever it might be, just setting up those basics. Whether it be Medicare, queuing up at the tax office, trying to set up a bank account. You know, you need a permanent address to set up a bank account. You can't get a permanent address until you get a bank account to sign a lease on something. So it's kind of like catch 22. So all of those are taken care of in the first couple of days. So essentially day two, you're ready to start work if you want to, or you're ready to head off and start traveling and then pick up work as and when, as you're traveling around. And for the next 12 months, wherever you happen to be, so in Australia, we've got offices in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Cairns, Darwin, and Perth. We've also got an office in Auckland in New Zealand. For the next 12 months, wherever you happen to be, whenever you need to work, we're your first port of call. Basically, you come to us and say, I need a job, I'm looking for bar work, I'm looking for office work, I want to pick fruit, I want to go and do that awesome thing on a boat that I heard that handsome guy talking about when I was back in Southampton, then we can sort it all out for you. Um, instead of arriving into a new town, you know, you do, you're there to travel. So maybe you leave Sydney, you're heading up towards Cairns. You get halfway up the coast, you go, oh, I'm running a bit, a bit low on funds. Instead of stopping in a town, handing out your CV, searching all the job boards, spending days trying to do that, you give our guys a ring, say, look, what's available locally? I want to do anything, I just want to earn some money. Our guys will set you up with work. So whether it be fruit picking and things like that, we can basically just set you up, you walk straight into it, or we can set up interviews for you know, whatever else it might be. So sales positions or temporary office work or pretty much anything going around. It's not all just fruit picking. I, I lied about that before. So, <laughs> although we would appreciate it if you pick our fruit for us. Um, so yeah, heaps of positions available at the moment, but kind of takes the headache out of, out of the working part of your working holiday, really. It leaves you to do your, to do your holiday bit. Now, I'm gonna tell you about one of our properties because it's hands down my favorite on Magnetic Island. And I mentioned it a little, little bit before when I was talking about the Oz experience as well. So Magnetic Island is about three hours south of Cairns. There's Cairns right at the top there. You've got to say it out your nose. Cairns. You can't say Cairns. Cairns. Down past Mission Beach, about three hours south, just off the coast of a little place called Townsville. Really chilled out little town, a really chilled out little island. It's got a population of about a thousand people on there. It's a koala sanctuary. What more do you want? Uh, right on the edge of the Great Barrier Reef. So we've got our own dive school there. You can go and do diving. That's uh, the gardens of our hostel there. So there's kind of the reception place there. 
the the hostel rooms are actually set up in all these little bungalows that are all set out all throughout the, the coast and the garden. So that's our beach right there that we're on. So it's not just a big room full of, or a big building full of rooms full of dorm beds, the same as a lot of hostels would be. It's more of a res kind of a resort style. Really relaxed, really quiet, really tranquil for most of the month. Once a month, we ruin that for everybody. Once a month we have a full moon party, which bearing in mind there's about a thousand people that live on the island, we're getting up to 3,000 people to these parties now. So they are huge, absolutely huge. Hands down the biggest backpacker party in Australia and New Zealand by a hell of a long way. Go, go back. There They're actually run in conjunction, or run by, um, the Australian affiliate for Ministry of Sound. So we get all the huge European, European, Scandi, Australian, North American DJs. Absolutely huge parties. They're obviously run once a month, on or around the full moon, and are getting absolutely huge. As I say, we're getting about 3,000 people. We're only limited to that by the sheer volume of people we can fit into basically our hostel area. It's done all throughout the gardens, right down onto the beach, and run over three days now, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all night, all day. Absolutely huge. Awesome, awesome fun. If you do want to go to them, definitely check out the dates. The guys here will have the dates. Definitely book some accommodation. You can imagine 3,000 people, 1,000 people live there. Accommodation's at a bit of a premium. We've got a comfortable beach, that's fine. You can sleep on that if you really want to. <laughs> but I'm gonna hand you over to, I believe, Carl now from Z Adventures. But thank you very much for listening. If you've got any questions, come and say good day later on. We'll be out the front having a beer. Thanks. Right. So you need to swap over here.